There's been a lot of talk in motorsport about the future of race engine technology. And since the announcement of a hydrogen class at the 2026 Le Mans 24 hours race, both hydrogen fuel cell and hydrogen combustion technology has become far more relevant. We're here at AVL Race Tech in Graz, Austria, where behind me you can see some of the large hydrogen storage tanks. And we're going to find out just how far down the path we are to clean, sustainable and exciting race engines. And here it is, AVL Race Tech's two litre hydrogen turbocharged combustion engine. Announced in 2022 and now running on the dyno, Rene is managing the testing. Can you just talk us through what makes this test bed different to a regular fossil fuel test bed? Sure. First of all, we, there is the hydrogen supply and all the safety regulations that come with it, meaning we need everything certified. We need special safety measures like nitrogen flushing in case of any burning and a forbidding of entering the test bed in case anything is pressurized where it would have a chance of leakage. And what makes this special? What makes it different for a hydrogen race engine? Basically, you need the hydrogen supply, which is medium pressure in this case. So what is different from a gasoline engine is metal intake manifold and hydrogen pressurized rail. We are running a hydrogen pressure regulator for the gas coming from company Ventrex in Graz. The metal components here are from MNH. We are running water injection. We have a huge water supply tank here in the test bed just to not uh, run out and can run for some time. We have um, lubrification for the hydrogen injectors because hydrogen is very dry and we need to lubricate them. We have huge charge air coolers for the massive amounts of air that we are pushing through the engine. We have special uh, ignition systems to avoid any inflammation that we do not want to have. And we saw the hydrogen tanks outside. Can you just talk through how much hydrogen you store at any one time? Per tank, we have 250 kilos roughly in one of those huge trailers. And we route it here to all the test beds, meaning our test bed and all the others that consume hydrogen. And oh, how much testing goes through? It's exciting as a race engine. How much testing goes before racing or something like this? That is some huge effort, of course, because you need to start nursing the engine and getting it going, then calibrating it. We are doing the, the base calibration, so to speak, and the power development, seeing what we can get out of such an engine. It's very cool, isn't it? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Glad to be part of it. <laughs> We've come from the test bed, we're now in the control room and we're about to fire up the engine. Nilton is the lead development engineer on this project. Can you just explain to us how difficult and complicated it is to run this engine? Yes, for sure. Like hydrogen, it's a really peculiar fuel and it needs to moderate the combustion process itself because it burns blazily fast. That's why we approach with water injection on it. Uh, but before we start with water injection, we need to start from some lambda uh, concepts, extremely lean, and going towards lambda one and moderating partially with water to, to get it ready. And it's complicated because as the fuel is so reactive, we need to keep eyes open in everything that we are doing and keep it focused to, to not mismatch what we want. And how nervous do you get at moments like this? Extremely because I need to keep my eyes open in all the parameters that's essential for the engine itself to keep it alive. If I do one click wrong, it's gone. And without any further ado, let's do this. And now the magic's happening. We're beginning to rev up the engine. We're looking for torque on this one, so we'll see how high we can get the figure. We're up to 3,000 revs now, and about just crossed 150 newton meters of torque. So we're beginning to get into the nice numbers here. Nilton's told us the party starts now. And there we go, we just crossed 300 newton meters of torque. Still at 4,000 revs, but just crossed, and we're still climbing. And the sound of this engine, it just, it's, as you would imagine a proper race engine should be. 
we are now just crossing 390 newton meters which the target we were given so the, we're over 400 now so it's, it's building it, I can't get across to you the sound of this engine it is just like a proper race engine you wouldn't know that this was hydrogen powered unless you had been told on one of the spare screens that we've got here, we can see the glow of the turbocharger. That's what you want from a race engine. You don't want it to be boring and silver all the time. Red glowing, that's what we like. There we go, we're just winding it down now it seems. We've gone past the 442 newton meters of torque we saw earlier. I think we went past 450 newton meters at 5,000 reps. The thing sounds incredible and you can still hear it going in the background. A ridiculous amount of torque from that engine, it's so impressive. I'm now joined by Paul Kappas, the father of the engine, after another successful dyno test. Now, Paul, can you talk us through some of the challenges and difficulties of designing a hydrogen combustion engine? Yes, Sam, for sure. Hydrogen is a, let's say, very reactive molecule. So it likes to ignite basically on everything you can imagine. Hot surfaces, hot oil droplets, too hot spark plugs, hot valves, whatever. So. From knocking, it's not that critical typically, but there is a big risk of pre-ignition. Pre-ignition means you have some combustion before the spark with huge peak pressures and destroying more or less everything. So this is one of the critical points. We have to find something to avoid pre-ignition as good as possible. Um, a second point is it's gaseous. It's not a liquid fuel. So we need something to bring a gaseous fuel in reasonable amount into the cylinder. So we need very, very specific injectors with extremely high flow if we want to run high power. And it's very difficult to get them. This is basically the, the two main points. And I understand there's been some unique elements made for this engine. Can you talk us through those processes? Yes, so at first, we want to have a very stable combustion. So we, have, we are having here a let's call it specific combustion system for a hydrogen engine that gives us a very stable flame propagation, a very fast and stable flame, reasonable ignition delay, tolerance against lean, tolerance against lots of water injection and stuff like this. This is the first point. The second point is if we manage to get all the stuff, the critical stuff from hydrogen done, we will end up with huge peak pressure, typically higher than a standard production engine. So we have to do precaution to tolerate that one without having a glance between block and cylinder head. This is the second point. The third point is typically we need a very specific turbocharging unit. So hydrogen needs specific charging devices, either on the lean side or like we run the engine, which is a bit different. And that needs specific tuning. And for sure, as you can also see on the engine, we have some, let's call it gas dynamic tuning on intake and exhaust uh, to get the pressure pulses right so that we get a low residual gas content in the cylinder, which again helps against pre-ignition and all that nasty stuff. And having seen it run on the dyno, how much of a thrill is it for you every time you, it gets fired up again? It, let's say the thrill starts when you push it into torque and power. This is the thrill because it wasn't done before. So if you read articles about typical hydrogen engines, they are 17, 18, 19 bar BMEP, 50, 60 kilowatts per liter, something like this. There are some engines also coming from us that can get a bit more torque. We have a nice commercial engine that can do a lot of torque. There are some that run similar power than we do, the current power none of them has done this kind of power level. So it's, it's something new and this is the thread. Doing something new, something no one else has done before, is a thrill, it's interesting, it's fantastic.
Fascinating stuff from Paul there. I'm now joined by AVL Racetech's Director of Motorsport, Ellen Law. Now, Ellen, can you talk to us a bit about the overall strategy for the hydrogen combustion engine here? Well, the overall strategy is what the overall strategy for AVL Racetech is, paving the way for sustainable motorsport, because this is where everybody has to go. Maybe being, being trailblazers, for example, with our H2 ICE engine, the strategy for it is to make motorsport affordable on plus because it's a two litre turbo engine. So we really want to, let's say, spread it and also show the technology for bigger goals. Like, for example, we all know 2026, but Le Mans is open for hydrogen topics, which fits, of course, very well for us as well. So also to drive uh, direction, bigger goals. Um, that doesn't mean we do not do electrification, have knowledge in fuel cell. We have all that, but we love motorsport and that has a bit to do also with the sound. So this is one of the things we do to go direction green. Now we've talked about more the strategy, but what about the vision? What's the wider picture here? Where does this go from here? That's a very good question because of course it's not enough just to build an engine and learn about the technology. Our vision is that we can offer a total 360 approach for race series and race tracks because the parent company, AVL, big engineering company, is also producing and engineering electrolyzers in a transportable solution. That means we could potentially, not only potentially, in the best case, we could offer a package where we can produce the hydrogen on track and then use it in the race cars. There's nothing better than that when we talk about green future in motorsport. It really is a fascinating technology and from a personal point of view, I love that we have a high performance, loud and most importantly green and sustainable alternative to fossil fuel combustion engines. I fully expect that we'll see very soon cars on racetracks around the world racing using hydrogen combustion engines thanks to companies like AVL Racetech. <laughs>